Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Cox. I'm a member of the Net Capital team. Let's allow one minute for folks to settle in. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'm seeing a bunch of folks trickle in. I would love if people are open to it, if you will share through the chat feature or the Q&A feature, where are you calling from? Uh, we're, we're pretty California heavy today, which is not super representative, but we have uh, Orange County and Los Angeles represented on the line here. Uh, but we'd love to hear where everybody else is coming from. If you want to just drop that into the chat or the Q&A while we're waiting for people to get settled. We got East Coast represented here, Boston, New York, love that. More Los Angeles, welcome, welcome. Down the street, we're neighbors. Although in LA, no one's really neighbors, right? No, I'm kidding. Tampa, okay, cool. More Orange County, welcome, welcome. Fantastic. Okay, so we're about one minute in, so let's go ahead and dive in. Before we uh, dig in here, and I'm so grateful to have Robert Steele with thumbs up on the line, but before we dig into the material, I'd like to cover a couple quick housekeeping items. Uh, please do use the Q&A feature built into Zoom. I know there's also a chat feature that's great for conversations. Do feel free to engage with that. But if you want to ask a question directly to our panelists, Robert, please do go ahead and use the Q&A feature built into Zoom. It's so much easier to track folks and to get to as many questions as they come in. Um, and please do ask your questions. We're here for you. I know all about Robert and thumbs up. So please do ask your questions. We want to keep this as interactive as possible. So please do ask those questions. Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's fun. I haven't seen that recently. Welcome. Okay. So with all that being said, uh, please join me in welcoming Robert Steele with thumbs up to the stage. Uh, as always, we're sharing with a company who's actively raising capital on the Net Capital platform. The company's called Thumbs Up. You can go directly to netcapital.com and search thumbs up, or you can go to netcapital.com slash thumbs up, or you can click the link that I just added into the chat, and that is T-H-U-M-Z-U-P. So go ahead and hit that link. You can review the offering page, and if you're still inclined, you too can invest in this company. Uh, so with all that being said, please join me in welcoming Brad to the stage, or excuse me, Robert to the stage. Robert, can you tell us a little bit about what you're building here with thumbs up? Great. Thanks, Eric. My pleasure. Yeah, so the big picture at Thumbs Up is similar to how Uber created tens of billions of dollars in value by democratizing ride sharing, and similar to how Airbnb created tens of millions of dollars in value by democratizing hospitality. Thumbs Up is in our, the process, we believe, of creating tens of billions of dollars of value by democratizing the $200 billion social media marketing and advertising industry. So what that means is that through the use of our technology platform and the community that we're building, we are opening it up so that everybody can get paid to post. So the way I explain it to my mother, for instance, is I say that Thumbs Up is the only platform that we know of that makes it easy for a brand or business to pay people cash to post about that brand or, or business. So what I'd like to do, Eric, is actually uh, talk you through a couple uh, screenshots that are going to explain exactly how that works. So if you could go to the next slide. So there's several ways that people might learn about the opportunity to get paid to post on the Thumbs Up platform. So one of the ways is that uh, local CBS, uh, CBS in Los Angeles, Channel 9, did a great four-minute piece on Thumbs Up, and our uh, user base has grown more than double since they did this piece. So that's one way people might learn about Thumbs Up if you go to the next slide. So they also might learn about Thumbs Up from billboards. <clears throat> so this is a billboard that we have on Lincoln Boulevard in Venice, California, and it says, get paid cash to post about select businesses and brands. So this street also has a lot of foot traffic on it. So someone might see the billboard, they learn about the opportunity, they might point their phone camera at that QR code, and that will put the Thumbs Up app on their phone. So if you go to the next slide. So also what will happen is we have more than 170 advertisers that are in the app. And this is uh, Los Angeles. This is Venice, Santa Monica, Culver City, uh, just now moving into West Hollywood. So 170 different businesses that are in the Thumbs Up app where people can get paid to post to their friends on social media about our advertisers. 
So this is one of the advertisers in a store called Hallowed Ground. So Hallowed Ground is a crystal store and a meditation studio. It's a block from the beach in Venice, California. So people walk in, they see interesting things in the store, and they see this opportunity that they can get paid $10 to tell their friends about the store on their personal social media. So to get started, what they would do is they would point their phone camera at that QR code. It would put the thumbs up app on their phone. The other way that they can learn about it is uh, Hallowed Ground also has an e-commerce business where people can order crystals online from Hallowed Ground. So there, when they are excited about their purchase, they open the box. They see a postcard in the box that says, get paid to post. So same idea. They point their phone camera at the QR code on the postcard, take a picture of their crystal, and they can get paid through the Thumbs Up app for telling their friends about the Hallowed Ground store, which is good for Hallowed Ground, our advertiser. So several different ways that they can learn about the Thumbs Up opportunity. So if you go to the next slide. So once they point their phone camera at the QR code, it takes them either to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Next slide. And then Thumbs Up is really, really easy to get started with. We only ask them for one thing. We just ask for their phone number. So they enter the phone number. Next slide, and it takes them immediately to the main screen, the main thumbs up screen. So the main thumbs up screen has four main components. So right in the middle of the screen, you see businesses around you. So the bottom part of the user interface is an up down scroller with your finger that is going to show you all of the local stores and businesses that will pay you to post about these local businesses on your personal social media through the thumbs up app. So you gave thumbs up permission to know where you are when you uh, put it on the phone the first time. And so now the business you're standing in is right in the middle of the screen there. So the thumbs up user can tap on hallowed ground and that is gonna start the process of them getting paid to post. But they can also use their finger and scroll down and it's gonna show them all the other local businesses near where they're standing that will pay them to post. So in this particular case, there's more than 20 businesses that will pay them to post within walking distance of hallowed ground. So once they learn about the opportunity at hallowed ground, they can also learn that they can go down the street and get a cup of coffee. They can go get a piece of pizza. They can go get a hamburger. They can go have a beer. They can go get their hair done all within a mile of the store they're standing in and get paid to post and tell their friends about all of those businesses. And that makes the app sticky. That makes people come back to use it because they learn about it in one place and then they find all these other thumbs up advertisers that they want to do business with. In the upper part of the screen, that's where the e-commerce comes in. So in the upper part of the screen, that's a left to right scroller. And so when they, if they uh, learn about thumbs up from a postcard in a, in a box of a product that they received, then they can look for the brand with their finger, just scroll left and right and look for the e-commerce brands. Or in either case, they can just enter the name of the business they're looking for in the search bar at the top. Also in the search bar at the top, they can enter a category. So for instance, I'm, I want a piece of pizza. Show me all the pizza places that will uh, pay me to post. Uh, you know, I want to get my hair cut. Show me all the uh, barbers or hair salons that will pay me to post. So if we could go ahead and, so then what I'm going to show you next in this, uh, in this narrative is in this example, the user is now going to tap on the hallowed ground tile uh, because they want to make a post and get paid to post a hallowed ground. So go ahead and hit the next slide there. So what Thumbs Up does is it takes uh, the user to the camera feature in their phone. And then in this example, the user is going to take a picture of a crystal ball. Next slide. So then just like any social media post, they're going to put a caption in that's going to accompany the picture. So in this example, the caption says, I love my crystal ball that I bought at Hallow Ground. So also we're adding value for our advertiser in a couple of ways here. So one of the things that we're doing is we're automatically putting the Instagram handle is what it's called of our advertiser in all the posts. So when this process is completed and this user has made this post, it's going to go out to their friends on their personal social media and all of their friends, when they see the crystal ball, if they want to do business with our advertiser, hallowed ground, they just have to tap on the name at hallowed ground in the Instagram post, and it will take them directly to the hallowed ground Instagram page. Additionally, we're putting hashtags in the posts automatically. So for instance, people follow hashtags just like they follow people on social media. So people follow hashtag Venice Beach, or they, they follow hashtag Midtown Manhattan, or they follow hashtag South Beach Miami. 
So in all of those places, the advertiser might put those hashtags, and that increases the number of people who will see this post beyond this user's friends on social media. And then on the screen, you actually see some grayed out features. These would be upcoming features in the future uh, where we will uh, work with additional social media platforms. And I'll talk about that more in the future. But in this example, what happens next is a user hits share, and then that picture of the crystal ball goes out on their personal Instagram. So go ahead and advance the slide. So what happens next is in the upper right-hand corner of the thumbs up screen, there's a dollar value. So if the thumbs up user taps on that dollar value, it brings this little screen up that shows a couple of things. One thing it shows in this example is that this user has already been approved $62 for previous posts that they've made that have been approved. So they can cash out that $62 to Venmo or PayPal at any time by tapping pay me on that screen. So in this example, though, there's $10 in the pending account, and that $10 is pending this advertiser reviewing the crystal ball post and approving it for payment. So go, go ahead and advance to the next slide. So this is the thumbs up dashboard. So this is a software technology a service that we give all the thumbs up advertisers. And so there are several things that they can see and that they can do here. So first, they're seeing all of the posts that are being made on their account. Uh, on the left-hand side, they see the cell phone number of the user that made the post. They see the Instagram handle of the user that made the post, and that's a hot link where they can click on that, and it's going to take them to the user's Instagram page so they can see how many followers they have. They can see the posts that they make. Uh, they can see that it's a, a real person that uh, they would value uh, paying for that post. Then there's two pictures on the screen there. The first column picture of the crystal ball is the picture that went live when the user made the post initially. The second crystal ball picture is what is on Instagram right now when the advertiser is reviewing these posts. So that helps us make sure that people aren't taking advantage of us and just putting, putting a post up and then taking it down. So the advertiser can see that the post has remained live and therefore that's one more reason why they would want to pay for it. So then the advertiser can review the caption. And then on the far side of the far right side of the screen, there's two choices there, accept and reject. So if uh, they believe that this post is valuable to them, they click on accept and the money will move from the pending account to the uh, to the approved account. If uh, it doesn't, if it's not acceptable to them, for instance, if it doesn't mention their brand, if the product in the picture is not something they sell, then they might hit reject. And then they can communicate with the user either by text message or by Instagram direct message. And they can say, thank you for participating. If you put up a post that uh, mentions our brand, we'd be happy to consider it for, uh, for payment. So right now we see about 80% of people do it right the first time, about 20 percent of people need some coaching. Uh, part of the service we provide is we're curating our community of uh, users, creators who are making these posts. So we have a community manager who develops relationships with our users and tells them when they're doing it uh, well and tells them when they need to make some adjustments in order to be uh, paid. So then if we could move to the next slide. So then what happens is that $10 has moved from the pending account to the approved account and the thumbs up user can cash out their approved balance at any time on PayPal or Venmo. So let's move to the next slide. So the value to the advertiser is now in this particular case, an Instagram user called Adam Sands. He has told all of his friends on Instagram that he likes our advertiser Hallow Ground. And Nielsen says that 92% of people trust recommendations from friends and family above advertising. So if digital advertising is a $200 billion a year market, how big is the market for scalable recommendations from friends and family that people believe is 92% more effective than advertising? We think it's a huge market. And so Thumbs Up is disrupting the digital advertising and social media marketing space by creating a scalable, scalable programmatic way for advertisers to get real people to tell their friends online about brands and products that they that they love. So if we go to the next slide. Okay, so we're very excited about the fact that on the user side, it's very frictionless and very easy for a user to learn about thumbs up and participate. So for instance, I uh, around the corner from our office, 
I was getting a cup of coffee in the morning, just so happened that I was at one of our advertisers, a local coffee shop about half a mile from our office. So I was standing in line and uh, the woman in front of me ordered a coffee and I uh, said to her, pardon me, I said, do you use Instagram? And she gave me this look like, why is this stranger talking to me? But she said, yes, I use Instagram. And I said, see that sign on the counter? This coffee shop will pay you $10 for sharing a photo on Instagram of the coffee you just ordered. And before I had even finished uh, that sentence, she had pulled her phone camera out, pointed it at the sign, put thumbs up on her phone, and she was making the, making the post to, to her friends about the coffee shop. So that's the user side of the story. The uh, the other side of that story is that same coffee shop, as just a coincidence, another personal friend of mine told me that she had discovered her new favorite coffee shop, which was this coffee shop. She said, I've lived in the area for years. I've never been there until I started using thumbs up and saw a thumbs up post about that coffee shop. Now it's my new favorite coffee shop. So that is very, very scalable. We can do that all over the world and do it trillions of times and make billions of dollars. So that's the user side. On the advertiser side, that's what you're looking at on the screen right now. So the advertisers sign up by going to thumbsupmedia.com. It's very, very simple. So they just enter some basic information, a business name, a email address, phone number, and it takes them to this screen where they configure their campaign. So at the top of the screen, you see direct to consumer. That's this two choices there when they click on it, either direct to consumer or brick and mortar. Brick and mortar means it goes in the lower part of the user interface, which is geolocated. Direct to consumer means it goes in the upper part of the user interface, which would be for e-commerce where there's no uh, specific uh, geographic location. And then I want to direct your attention to the bottom of the screen where it says dollars per post. So the advertiser chooses how much they want to pay people. So in the current system, they could they could pay as little as a dollar, you know. So think, so think like a coffee shop. If you're ordering a four dollar latte, you know, maybe it makes sense uh, to uh, get paid a dollar for telling your friends. Um, or the most that someone has paid so far is fifty dollars. So that has been uh, for a, um, a a high end painting contractor is paying fifty dollars. Uh, the most common payout right now is ten dollars, and that's what's on the screen. So then the second thing that the advertiser uh, picks is how many posts they want to load up in the system on the campaign. So in this example, they're paying $10 per post. They're buying 100 posts, and we're going to charge them $1,300 for that. So that's our revenue. The $300 or 30% is our revenue. And then the $1,000 will stay in the system until 100 posts get made and approved. So once the 101st post gets uh, attempted, then that user in the app is going to get a message and the message is going to say, this campaign has been so popular, please try again later. And then our salesperson can call that advertiser and say, people want to tell their friends about your business. Why don't you buy some more posts? So below the screen, there's another feature that's very, very valuable where the advertiser can pick how often people can get paid. So they can set it so that a, a individual person could get paid uh, twice a month or once a week or once a day. And that helps uh, balance the uh, uh, notion of impressions versus um, uh, oversaturation. So impressions are valuable in advertising, but we don't want to have one or two people burn the whole campaign down because that's not uh, as valuable to the advertiser. So if we could go to the next slide. Um, so Eric, that's the overview of uh, Thumbs Up. So I, I welcome your questions before we move forward. Thank you so much for that. And I think this is really exciting, especially in the new world of digital media where the individual is very much the influencer. And I love that data point. We trust our people, our friends, our family, our community groups. Uh, so we get influenced by that even more so than these bigger, really established influencers who are clearly monetizing. So uh, exciting technology, but you know, technology is only the first piece. Obviously, the most important part is the team. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Robert, and the team that you've been able to assemble? Sure. Uh, so I actually live in a part of Los Angeles that some people call Silicon Beach. Um, so I'm about half a mile from uh, Facebook and Google and uh, YouTube. Uh, it's uh, uh, also known as Playa Vista. So uh, about five years ago, I rented a room on Craigslist and I met Danny Lupinelli. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why they call it Silicon Beach, because uh, techies uh, 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 are living in the neighborhood and uh, it's uh, it, it's creating a lot of uh, uh, good uh, uh, techie vibe in our neighborhood. So that's how Danny and I met. 
Um, at the time, I had a big whiteboard on the living room wall where I was uh, strategizing different uh, startup ideas, and he saw this one, and uh, uh, and we started working on it. Uh, <clears throat> so Danny uh, uh, has a great resume. Uh, he was a coding manager at uh, Rubicon Project, now, now called Magnite. He was a coding manager at Hulu, the online TV streaming company. He was a coding manager at Honey, uh, the online couponing company. And then he uh, became a coding manager at PayPal. So Danny is used to working on systems used by tens of millions of people that can never go down. Uh, has had a great career at some premier companies. Very, very smart guy. Uh, he and I get along really well. And so the concept for thumbs up that we just reviewed with you, those were those were cons ideas that I came up with. But uh, Danny really built the software and has made it very reliable uh, and very scalable. So myself, uh, I this is the third uh, pump of company that I've been CEO or president of. Uh, in my career, I've sold about $30 million worth of technology and services to many Fortune 500 companies like GMAC and uh, Sony and Warner Brothers. So previous to a thumbs up, I uh, designed and built uh, with the team a, a, a copyright management software system that that is used by Warner Brothers and BMG. Um, and then before that, I was involved in business process outsourcing services that uh, my companies uh, provided to companies like GMAC. And way back in the day, I was uh, involved in a computer aided design a software company that I started uh, with uh, two partners out of uh, out of college. So I've been a techie entrepreneur for quite a while, uh, but uh, I believe that Thumbs Up is on a whole nother level uh, uh, compared to things that I've been involved in previously. So back to you, Eric. Always great having folks on the line who are experienced in the space, but seeing what it looks like to actually run the company, not just envision what it could look like. So it's great to have you share these details. And uh, congratulations on adding such a great technical co-founder to the team. I know it's always a difficult process, but it uh, sounds like you found a perfect match. Let's talk a little bit about the problem that you face in the industry and what your solution in Thumbs Up does to address that problem. Cool. Could you pull up the next slide? Thank you. Um, so there's two different problems that I want to highlight. Um, so when we when we started Thumbs Up, we were focused on the problem that's on the slide. Uh, so the uh, in, so there's been a rise of something called influencer marketing, uh, and influencer marketing has actually grown to become quite a big business. Uh, it uh, uh, it was about five billion dollars about three or four years ago. It's forecast to be twenty billion dollars, and that's uh, that's really this idea of someone being paid to make a promotional social media post. So, you know, so some people make a post about a product that they like online and they just do it because they like it. Well, that's not an industry. The industry is when people are being professionally paid to do it. And that's called influencer marketing. So there is a problem in that space. And the problem in that space is that even though people pay a lot of attention to famous people and when they, uh, post about products online. The reality is the engagement is not very strong. And where the real strong engagement is, is on people who have less than a thousand followers. So the data shows that on average, people who have less than a thousand followers can get a 7% re response rate, meaning 7% of people care enough about what was posted to do something, uh, to like it or make a comment. Uh, whereas like superstars, when they make posts, the engagements can be 1% uh, or lower. So uh, the problem that we solve is how can a brand or a business aggregate a lot of people who have these higher response rates? Uh, and that's that's what we've done. We've developed a platform that's uh, that's designed for uh, people who do not see themselves as professional influencers because people trust their posts more. Uh, so the the second thing that we've discovered, so that was that was one of the notions when we when we created the software. But now that we're out and uh, we we have almost a thousand users now, and we have more than 170 advertisers. What we're learning that's really in favor of the thumbs up business is that small businesses uh, do not like a lot of the existing advertising choices that are out there. Uh, they think they're overpriced. They don't trust them. Um, and uh, so, so even though we think of digital advertising as this huge business, 
what we're finding is there is a need in that marketplace. There is a problem. There's a, there's a trust factor out there. There's a complexity factor out there. So we are very well positioned to move into uh, the, the very large social media um, digital advertising marketplace with a, a new offering that's much easier to use. Um, uh, 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 we're, we're excited about that. So we discovered along the way a new problem that is a fit for our solution. Thank you, Eric. Absolutely. And that's that's really great. Thanks for sharing these metrics too, for those who are unfamiliar with how, how that engagement looks as you get larger and how impactful it can be to get these micro, nano, maybe even smaller influencers involved in these campaigns. Super exciting. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with the online advertising market, can you share a little bit of details around how big is this market actually? I'm going to queue up that slide right now. Sure. Um, well, in the in the last bull run, uh, the, the, we had this buzzword that developed called FANG, the FANG stocks, uh, 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 Facebook, Apple, Netflix, and Google. So half of that is digital marketing and advertising, social media uh, marketing. So Facebook is the big player, $750 billion uh, market cap, uh, and Google, obviously, huge player in ad, in, in ad tech. So the statistics are that worldwide, that space, people paying for online digital advertising, is forecast to grow th to $354 billion by 2026. And it's been growing annually in double digits up from $208 billion in 2022. So uh, people sort of intuitively know that it's a big space and, and you know there's the numbers. It's huge and growing by double digits. So the segment of that that's closest to what uh, we're doing is this influencer marketing uh, segment. So the influencer marketing segment is growing even more rapidly. So so paying people to post online about products is growing faster, uh, almost double uh, than uh, just traditional digital ads. So that's the closest existing market to what uh, what Thumbs Up is doing. So 29% growth. Who doesn't like that? I certainly do. And 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 I think it all comes around that data that you shared earlier that people are recognizing and firms and marketers are recognizing this value in these uh, individual influencers and the way that they can mobilize their communities. Um, so love to see that trajectory and the growth that you've seen so far. Um, so massive, massive market, 354 billion, and even the total addressable market, 20 billion, very, very large. Let's talk a little bit about how Thumbs Up makes money. Can you tell us a little bit about the business model? Absolutely. Yeah, you can queue up the next slide. So very, very simple. So we like things that are simple. Uh, so an advertiser that buys 100,000 posts to pay $10 for a post to the thumbs up creator would purchase those posts for $13 each or a one $1.3 million would buy 10,000 posts to pay $10. So thumbs up makes 300,000 in that example as a revenue and then holds the million in our system as uh, the 100,000 posts get made and approved. So just very, very simple, 30% uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 markup on the posts on the campaigns. Perfect, perfect. And we could talk a little bit on this next slide. I think you added some more details about uh, what it looks like when you apply it to this larger market. Yes, so this slide, this is probably my favorite slide in the deck, Eric. Uh, so, uh, so, you, you, you know, the classic thing when you talk about uh, uh, doing an early stage company, uh, you know, the advice that I give to other entrepreneurs is that you want to have a very large total addressable market. Uh, that's what's going to motivate uh, many investors to believe that you could create a billion dollar company. So we have a huge total addressable market. So in the U.S. is 31 million uh, small businesses. On average, 45% in any given year buy digital ads. When they do buy digital ads, they spend about $500 a month. So what I'm waking up every morning to do is to get this company to the point where we've got 10% of those businesses giving us 20% of their budgets. That would be 1.8 billion, 1.78 billion in ad volume on the Thumbs Up platform. And our 30% would be more than 500 million in revenue. And that's only getting 10% of the U.S. small businesses that buy digital ads. That's not even counting on uh, ads from Fortune 500 brands, which we do believe we will penetrate that space as well. And it looks like the way the platform is structured, that there's an international application as well beyond this domestic numbers as well. Does that Am I thinking about that right, Robert? 
absolutely. We uh, uh, we have uh, about 200 shareholders in the company right now. And of those shareholders, we've got probably half a dozen that have, have told us that they want to bring us to various parts of the globe. So one of the investors wants to help us get into Canada. One of the investors wants to help us get into Central America. So uh, people hear this story and they immediately want to know how they can bring it uh, to their country when they're ex-U.S. Fantastic, fantastic. And before I switch over and talk about some of the traction that you've already been able to garner mm -hmm. thus far, uh, we're about halfway through our scheduled programming. So I'm going to go ahead and go for a shameless plug here. As a reminder, we're on with Robert Steele, uh, the team member with Thumbs Up. They're actively raising capital on the Net Capital platform. You can go to netcapital.com and search Thumbs Up, or you can go directly to the link that I added into the chat feature. I just added that again. Or you can go directly to netcapital.com slash thumbs up. And again, that is T-H-U-M-Z-U-P. Uh, so go ahead and check that out, review the offering page. And if you're so inclined, you too can invest. Shameless plug is over. Let's get back into the traction here. Tell us a little bit about your initial rollout strategy and the success you've been able to garner to date. Yeah, thank you, Eric. So one of the good things about where we are in uh, the overall tech world is that there's now a lot of really good wisdom out there from a lot of really smart people that have gone before us. And we're drawing on that. So for instance, there's a book called The Cold Start Problem, which was written by the former head of growth at Uber named Andrew Chen. And that's that's sort of my Bible for how we're uh, going from uh, you know startup phase to scalability. So one of the things that he explains in that book is that, for instance, Airbnb knows that after they get 300 uh, uh, listings in a given geography that they get organic growth from there. So we believe that Thumbs Up is that type of business that can create that flywheel effect, that it's compelling uh, and it's easy and it fits a need, it's exciting. Uh, so we're we're seeing that. So that's what we're focused on right now. Also, if we think of Uber, uh, so we do think of ourselves similar to Uber. Uh, uh, and in the beginning, Uber was focused on a small portion of San Francisco. And I wasn't there just having read about it. As I understand it, they were focused on a small portion of San Francisco, not the whole city, where they wanted to get density. They wanted to get market domination in a small area. And they wanted to demonstrate that they had the flywheel effect, that they had something that was so valuable and so compelling that people would tell one another about it and that it would get adoption without uh, the hard lift. So we're seeing that in this region in uh, Venice, Santa Monica was where we're focused right now. So the map that's on the screen is an area north of LAX, south of Brentwood, west of the 405. So we've gotten uh, more than 170 businesses that have signed up in this geographical area uh, through a focus. And we're getting uh, neighborhoods that are coming on board uh, because people are, uh, so for instance, our second client uh, saw what was going on at the first client and he came to us and said, I've got to have it. He didn't realize he was the second client. Uh, we, we see that there's a, a certain advertiser out there that just sees what it is and they say i've been looking for this i i, I want a way to uh, easily reward my customers for telling their friends about about the business so specifically uh, what we're seeing is in this area we have had users that no one on our team has ever met that have gone door to door and told businesses they need to sign up for thumbs up and then send us warm leads. Okay, that is the flywheel effect. We've had advertisers that have referred us to other advertisers that have signed up, again, with no cost of sale. So we believe that thumbs up uh, is that unique type of business that generates, uh, that, that self perpetuates itself just by getting density and getting, um, uh, getting uh, domination in a geographical area. Uh, so then as we move forward, uh, we'll expand to greater Los Angeles. We actually just uh, recently started uh, in uh, uh, West Hollywood, but then we'll move to some other cities. For instance, we might move to Miami, we might move to New York, uh, and again, not trying to tackle all of Miami, trying to get density. And we also want to demonstrate that this is a destination app. So we are seeing, like I told the story a moment ago about the person who discovered her favorite coffee shop in the neighborhood that she lives, that she drives past all the time from the Thumbs Up app. So we see that people are making their purchasing decisions. We have people who've come uh, from 
uh, uh, from, uh, you know, a hundred miles south of LA who made it a weekend to come to Los Angeles just to drive around and patronize the thumbs up businesses. Cause it's fun. And, uh, why wouldn't you, uh, uh, go have lunch at a place, you know, particularly, particularly for a couple, uh, why wouldn't you go have lunch at one of our advertisers like Hinano or Tavern on Main or CNO or Bell's Beach House when you can walk away with $20 in your pocket by, uh, making an Instagram post about it. Uh, so that's the initial rollout strategy is to dominate the west side of Los Angeles, and we feel we're well underway. And and you've come prepared with some really exciting analytics on how customer reach has looked so far. So let me go ahead and queue up this slide and let you share some more details about uh, traction so far. Yes, yes. We uh, did a review. So there's, there's been about 12,000 posts that have been made so far on Thumbs Up. Uh, and we did some analysis on that, and we found some interesting things. So. If uh, the advertisers had had paid uh, the the market price for all of those uh, posts, uh, we do the math and we find that our cost. Uh, so so I, uh, first another concept. So what we did is we took all of the twelve thousand posts and we looked at how many followers were uh, behind each post. So you know this post was made by somebody with a thousand followers. This post was made by somebody with a hundred followers. This post was made by somebody with 40,000 followers. So we added up that uh, total follower count and we found that those 12,000 posts could have been potentially seen by about 25 million people slash impressions. So when we do the math, we find that our cost to reach one of those people is six tenths of a cent. Um, now I don't work for Facebook, but I have a, an article that says that Facebook's cost uh, per reach uh, is greater than that, uh, somewhere between seven tenths of a cent and a cent. So we were obviously pretty excited that we could make the case that our cost per reach uh, is less than Facebook. We thought that was pretty compelling. Uh, then we did an analysis of people that liked posts in the month of August, and we found that our cost to get someone to like a post was 76 cents in the month of August. And then again, we did a little research on what it costs uh, to get a, a, a like on a Facebook ad campaign, and the number that we found was a dollar uh, seven cents. So in both the cost to reach a person on social media and the cost to get someone to pay enough attention to like a post. Right now, we have data that shows that we're below Facebook. So we think our uh, thumbs up posts are more valuable than Facebook ads because it's real people telling their friends. But now we can say that we actually have dollar value and economic value as well, not, uh, not just uh, uh, um, uh, anecdotal value. That's fantastic. And all these big these big picture numbers are super impressive. And I think they're really important for folks to know. And let's take a moment and dig into one specific example as well. Let's do an anecdotal overview here with this example. Yes, this is uh, so like any good startup CEO. Um, yeah, go back to the bike for a second. Uh, so I'm talking to a lot of investors and potential investors every day. And this is this is my favorite antidote that I'm giving. So the Harley dealership in uh, Venice, California is a thumbs up advertiser. So this is a huge Harley dealership. It's on Lincoln Boulevard, you know, very exciting, great business. And every year they do uh, an anniversary uh, party um, uh, and invite people, you know, like open house. So we uh, set up the thumbs up tent at 10 a.m. Uh, at their last uh, open house and started uh, showing uh, the bikers that came early uh, how to use thumbs up and started getting them to post on Instagram about this event. So by one o'clock, the caterer told us, he said, I wish someone had told us that thumbs up was going to be there because we ran out of food. Uh, so the CEO told us it was the most attendance they had ever had. And part of that is what you see on the screen here, that this uh, this is just one user. So this this uh, this one post uh, within five hours, he got 112 likes and uh, his friends came to this event. So we did that. So about 20 of those posts got made between 10 a.m. and 11 uh, a.m. and noon. And the and it and it worked. Uh, all these uh, many, many, many people saw these posts. They are in uh, the community. They like Harleys. They came to the event. We blew it up. We helped them blow it up. And uh, we can do that all over the world and uh, make this a huge business. And then, yes, if you could show the next slide. So this is another uh, anecdotal example. So uh, we um, were involved in a uh, uh, a local festival called Mainopoly, 
and we um, <clears throat> we let uh, the attendants of the festival know that we had ten, we have we have 15 clients that were within walking distance of that uh, festival. So we were onboarding people onto the app, letting them know they could walk around the neighborhood and get paid to post at all of our clients nearby. And uh, and this uh, lady made a post at one of our advertisers called Blow Me Candles. And as you can see on the screen, she got 99 likes in three hours. So she has a, a, a roughly about 900 followers. So that's a 10% response rate. So this is a, ostensibly this this is a $13 ad that got a 10% response rate in three hours. And I would make the case that uh, I don't know of any other form of digital advertising that can create that much engagement uh, that fast. So we're pretty proud of that one. No, that's super impressive for those. And she's not. Area, a, and, and no, sorry no, no. to talk over you, but I want to highlight that she's not a professional influencer. And and that's, we we think we can do that all over the world. Yeah, no, that's an important distinction. I'm glad you added that as well. This is not mm -hmm. pure traditional influencer marketing. This is people, be, you know, leveraging their communities thoughtfully through your technology. Yes. Uh, super exciting pieces there. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about the future. And whenever I talk about the future, I like to give a little bit of an asterisk. Uh, the future is inherently uncertain and speculative, but let's talk a little bit about what you imagine might be your upcoming successes, if you will. Sure. Uh, so yeah, things we have in, in, in the oven cooking up. Um, so uh, we recently have been accepted as a developer on the Clover platform. So we're working on an early stage uh, of our of our Clover application. So Clover is a point of sale system that has more than 650,000 retail locations in the United States. Um, so if uh, if things go according to plan, uh, we would be uh, uh, further accepted to be a, 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 a an offering that the Clover uh, customer could sign up for in their point of sale system. Uh, so that gives credibility to us. And then what it might do technologically is imagine that you go buy a cup of coffee or a piece of pizza and you get your receipt and at the bottom of the receipt, it says get paid to post and it's got the thumbs up QR code at the bottom of the receipt. So if we were able to get 1% of those Clover businesses to participate in thumbs up, that'd be 6,000 new clients. So that's just a window in how we believe we can really uh, scale this thing. Uh, so other uh, things that uh, uh, our investors could look forward to in the future <clears throat> is we would do uh, additional social media platforms. So we're social media agnostic in vision. So we would do, uh, for instance, TikTok. Uh, we might do X. Uh, we're going to go deeper into our relationship with uh, Instagram, uh, perhaps stories and reels. Then um, we'll also provide better analytics for our clients. Uh, we'll provide uh, what we call a gig sales expansion uh, program, where what that would mean is that someone would be able to sign up to sell the thumbs up app in their town. So think like Tallahassee or Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, someone could sign up to uh, learn about how to sell thumbs up, We'd have, give them a video course, give them a test, and they could end up uh, uh, getting a, a commission on our commission. We think we could do that in a thousand cities across the US and, and really, really scale this business very, very fast with that uh, uh, that type of approach. I, I like that decentralized uh, gig sales expansion model. I've mm -hmm. seen that be used really effectively across different types of uh, software as a service models. Um, going forward, for those, I bet you a bunch of folks on the line are first learning about this entire industry, and this will be new to a lot of folks. But let's talk about, and, and, I, and I know you're early and kind of specialized in this space, but let's talk about other players, the competitive landscape, and how you differentiate yourself. And I'm going to switch over to that slide now. Sure. So the closest uh, types of businesses out there to thumbs up are things like Isia and Paid and Grin. So for instance, if you want to hire a professional influencer and want that influencer to promote your restaurant or your clothing brand, then that's that's where you would go. You'd go to a company like Isia. Uh, but the the difference between thumbs up and these influencer, professional influencer marketplaces is that we have a goal of having more than a billion users. So we're 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 looking at uh, focused on providing value to the advertiser and to the user for the general public, uh, billions of people. Um, 
you uh, can, you know purchase the thumbs up service on a pay per click basis, which is similar to programmatic advertising. That's different uh, than uh, a um, an influencer campaign marketplace. Uh, we have a programmatic dashboard that allows the user to very very easily set uh, the payouts and the quantity. Um, the, they can um, just set up a campaign to do uh, 50 posts through our programmatic dashboard, uh, very similar to Google ads, Facebook ads. That's very different than these influencer marketplaces. Um, and we believe that we're very frictionless. It's super easy for a user to get on board. It, it literally takes a minute or two minutes for a new user to start working with Thumbs Up, which is, again, very different than these influencer marketplaces. Yeah, most folks seem to have focused on uh, the establishment, the the kind of the actual true influencers with larger followings, where you're mm -hmm. really kind of the democratic access to influencers and really citing application here. That's a really yes. important nuance. Um, uh, keeping the party going here, for those who are saying, hey, this is super exciting. I think I know enough. I want to learn more. Let's talk a little bit about the deal details here. Yeah, so Thumbs Up is publicly traded. The stock symbol is TZUP. Tom Zebra Umbrella Paul. We went public through a direct listing. So this is not a reverse merger. It's a very clean uh, capital structure. Uh, so we are currently um, have a reg A plus offering. So that means that we can do general solicitation to the uh, public. So we do run digital ads, for instance, about this offering. Uh, so it's also means that the shares are registered. So there's no uh, holding period. So we uh, registered 2 million shares with the SEC for our Reg A Plus offering. Uh, we've sold about uh, very close to a million dollars worth of that offering. Uh, so uh, uh, do need to update the slide. Uh, so it's about uh, 8, million, uh, 8 million shares. Um, uh, uh, oh, I, uh, 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 it says a million closed, 8 million remaining. That's actually accurate. And then uh, uh, sh shares issued an outstanding, seven around 7.2 million. Uh, and that's a $32 million pre-money valuation. So we have uh, 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 bonus shares available to uh, various perks. So for instance, if someone invests $10,000, uh, uh, they'll get 5% more shares as a bonus shares. If they invest $50,000, they'll get 10% more bonus shares all the way up to someone that makes a million dollar investment would get 30% more bonus shares. And that lowers their effective price and uh, lowers the, uh, the pre-money valuation. So, uh, the objective, once this raise is completed, is we would look to uplust uh, the uh, thumbs up as quickly as possible to a senior exchange that gives us ac more access to institutional capital, more liquidity. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And the main criteria is completing the raise. Uh, also, these funds would position us to be able to expand into uh, other cities, maybe Miami, maybe uh, maybe New York, and also to uh, reach out and onboard uh, additional social media platforms and do some of the other things that we saw on that uh, future slide. Fantastic. And so this is super helpful. Again, this information is available. Uh, and for those folks who want to learn more, maybe they want to be supportive in some way, maybe they're a business owner and they're interested in marketing or collaborating with you, how would they get in touch with you? So 800-403-6150, uh, we'll put you in touch with the Thumbs Up team, uh, or you can email us at investors at thumbsupmedia.com, or you can uh, buy the stock through the Net Capital portal. Uh, so Robert Steele, I'm the CEO of Thumbs Up and uh, look forward to engaging with anyone that uh, reaches out to us. Fantastic. And thanks so much for making yourself available and sharing those details about this offering, Robert. I'm actually super excited that we were able to hop on today. And I look forward to meeting you in person at the Tech Coast Angels event tomorrow in Orange County. So I'm glad that we'll be able to link up tomorrow. And for any folks who are, or are around or in this area, Feel free to join us at the Tech Coast Angels event face to face with the investors tomorrow night at 5 p.m. at UCI. Um, so that actually concludes some of our pre scripted uh, materials, and we have some great questions coming in. So I think we're going to start transitioning directly into more questions coming in. Um, in terms of defensibility of your product, can you talk a little bit about your IP strategy? Um, and obviously, this is software, so it's not necessarily patents, but um, is, there, is there a plan for patents? Is it more soft IP? Can you tell us a little bit about your IP strategy, please? Sure. So the the first most valuable piece of intellectual property that we have is uh, the trademark. So you see the circle R on the thumb. So Thumbs Up owns the U.S. federal trademark on that thumb. Uh, so branding, you, you know, so when you think about Apple, Nike, 
Google, uh, even though they uh, Apple and Google have great technology, they have great brands too. So uh, right out of the gate, we believe that we've got uh, world-class branding with the thumbs up name and thumbs up th uh, thumb icon. And we also own the registered federal trademark on that thumb. So we think that's a big part of the answer to your question. Then, you know, I, I have been awarded uh, patents in the past uh, for an early stage company with the use of capital right now, it wouldn't be something that we'd be doing, uh, you know, in the next quarter filing software patents, software patents are not easy to obtain. Um, and, uh, they're not easy. Uh, they're, they're easy to get around for the competitors. Uh, but in, the, you know, in the future, as the company scales and grows, there will be a, a place for that. You know, right now our dif uh, differentiator is execution. Uh, that uh, there is nobody doing exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, we, we're we adding users every day. We're adding advertisers every day. Uh, we have a product roadmap that we believe will keep us ahead of competition. And we also believe that competition would actually be healthy. So I believe that Lyft is actually part of the reason why Uber has a $90 billion valuation, that it's good for uh, the marketplace to see choices. Uh, so our job is to out-execute those competitors. Yeah, even as a big fan of intellectual property, I do think that I like to tell our junior uh, entrepreneurs, uh, especially that there's no there's no substitute for execution. So at the end of the day, going out, dominating, getting market share, owning the market, uh, there really is no legal substitute for that. So I love that you guys have been able to do in, in terms of execution. And I know you already talked about uh, uplisting to you know NASDAQ or one of the alternative or one of the other uh, larger exchanges. Can you talk a little bit about other potential exits for investors? And, I, and I'm, again, I'm going to throw out a massive asterisk that when we're talking about exits, super speculative and uncertain. <laughs> but go ahead and tell us about other potential exits. Sure. Well, in, Instagram, uh, roughly, if I remember correctly, was uh, purchased by Facebook. Now Meta, uh, it only existed for two years and got bought uh, for $1.2 billion. Um, so, uh, you, you, you know, we think that thumbs up has those types of characteristics, uh, as we uh, start to get more and more speed of adoption. Uh, so, uh, meta has, uh, you know, a $750 billion market cap, and we believe that we're, uh, strategically valuable to them once we get a little more scale. So every day we're getting new people to sign up for Instagram. Every day we're getting businesses uh, that have not been active on their Instagram to get active on their Instagram. So we're currently, even in our small state, increasing engagement on meta platforms. Uh, we also think that there is a shift in the industry uh, to paying creators. So we think we're uh, we're aligned with that trend. Um, and and we, we do think that there are a lot of candidates uh, that would want to acquire this business, uh, and that it's uh, complementary to their line of business. Absolutely. Those are great alternatives to continuing to, to list on uh, public exchanges. Um, and I love this question. You know, I am an investor, super grateful to be part of the team. How can we help other than cash? I always love this question. Thanks for that. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. So right now we have roughly 200 uh, shareholders uh, to uh, uplist to a senior exchange. We're going to need at least 300. So uh, uh, tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm calling uh, shareholders and asking them to refer people to us. So the uh, minimum investment in the Reggae Plus is $1,003.50. Uh, what would help us, though, is uh, for a new investor to invest more than $2,501. So that'd roughly be 556 shares. So if anyone wants to help, please refer your friends to uh, invest in Thumbs Up. The The number that really helps us is more than uh, $2,500 because there's just some criteria that, that uh, helps us get to NASDAQ. So you're helping your investment by uh, helping us add to our shareholder count. Uh, so that's the easy ask right now is uh, uh, tell a friend about Thumbs Up and help us get uh, to a senior exchange. Love that, Robert. And that feels like a good time to remind folks, you too can own a piece of Thumbs Up by going directly to netcapital.com slash Thumbs Up or going to netcapital.com and searching Thumbs Up, T-H-U-M-Z-U-P. Uh, love that. And I'm really excited that folks are thinking about uh, supporting in alternative ways. And then obviously telling a friend, um, is there a way to sign up and learn more if you do get to that gig sales expansion? Or is that kind of a little bit too early to collect that info? A little early, but you yeah. know, we do like to give people uh, enough information about what we're thinking so that they can see how 
we see that this could become a multi-billion dollar company. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it, for for those that follow the Silicon Valley um, pundits, there the, there's a lot said right now about in the early stage, do things that don't scale. Um, uh, so what we're trying to do right now is make sure that our advertisers and our users are having a fabulous experience, that they love it. Uh, we recently had a, a party at one of our clients. We had more than 200 people there, and and we had many of our advertisers there, many of our users there. People had a great time. P there were people telling me it was the it was the best corporate event they'd ever been to. So that's what we want. We want enthusiasm, uh, and you can build from there, and you can scale from there. Uh, but uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, uh, we, we will be letting people know when they can sign up to uh, sell thumbs up in their neighborhood. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Stay tuned. Make sure you're coordinating with Robert here to make sure that you're, you're the first to know when they're, when you want to expand onto that, to that region. Um, last couple of questions. We'll start to wrap up here. And Chris, I do see that you have your hand raised. I'm not able to welcome you up onto the stage, uh, but if you please do use that Q and a feature on zoom, or you could just go ahead and enter your question into the chat and I'll go ahead and get that addressed here in these last couple of minutes. So thanks for that participation. Uh, another question from the team here. Um, you know, you talked about senior exchanges. Does the company meet the other requirements to uplift NASDAQ, or are there any that are obviously still kind of pending that you have to work through? Uh, sure. At, at a high level, the uh, requirements are to have $5 million in net shareholder equity. We're at 500000 from our last queue. So that's satisfied by completing the Reg A+. Plus. Uh, the next one would be the shareholder count. I uh, already addressed that. The next one would be uh, the board candidates. So we have ad current advisors to the company that uh, would uh, move into those board seats. Um, uh, so we have some very high quality advisors to the company that uh, would be moving into those board seats to meet those NAS the the uh, senior exchange requirements. And then the the last uh, major criteria would be us having fifteen million dollars in free trading float. So uh, right now, I believe, uh, according to the NASDAQ calculation, we should be around 2.3 million shares that are, would be considered free float. Um, so at a recent uh, a $6 uh, a share price, uh, 2.3 million times six, we're roughly, uh, you know, getting close to that 15 million, not quite there. Uh, but the re again, the Reg A Plus, once we're, we complete that offering, that would double that uh, free float amount. Uh, so we're 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 visualizing that we can that we can get it done, and most of it just amounts to closing out the Reg A plus offering. And we have we have many people that have told us that they would uh, help us close it out. Yeah, and with uh, nearly a million already into the deal, I think if I remember correctly, that puts you at the top ten percent of all Reg A plus offerings hosted through this security ex exemption. Um, so congratulations on that traction, getting to that mark, and it looks like you're going to continue to to grow that number. Yes. Um, a couple of recent questions crept in um, and I don't want to duplicate the answers though. We did cover exit plan and minimum investment on the call. So I don't want to um, distract from the other questions that came in, but please do go ahead and review the material so they have been recorded. They'll be uploaded to the Net Capital YouTube account. I know Robert Steele did share his information as well. I'm sure he's available to follow up on anything that you might've missed. So as much as I want to cover those again, I do want to keep in and on time and get this last question in. Um, can we do, what is your cost per acquisition per customer per brand? And what is the retention rate? So if you could do broad strokes numbers on that, customer acquisition cost and retention rates. Yeah, so we're we're at approximately 95% uh, uh, retention or 5% churn. So it's pretty small. And there was a an issue that we fixed in the app and we haven't had any advertiser leave since we fixed that issue. Um, and then you know we're we're a publicly traded company, so people can read the um, <clears throat> uh, the balance sheet and income statement and see how much we're spending on marketing. So uh, we've uh, uh, grown from uh, 30 advertisers to 170 advertisers this year. Uh, so if you take the amount of money that we spend on marketing by you know adding 140, that's the current uh, customer acquisition uh, cost. I don't have the number off the top of my head. No, that's perfect. And again, the information is available. So feel free to reach out. You can learn more on the offering page on Net Capital. And of course, uh, Robert has made himself readily available. Um, sorry, I didn't want to rush past this, but the last couple of minutes, I like to do closing remarks and actually have one minute left. So this is perfect timing. Robert, can you tell us a little bit about why now is the perfect time to go to netcapital.com and invest and join the Thumbs Up family? 
Uh, well, we're excited about the fact that uh, we've had a 10x increase in users uh, this year. We're excited about the fact that we've had a 6x increase in advertisers this year. So those numbers are trending up. If I do another 10x increase in users, that's 10,000. Another 10x, that's 100,000. Another 10x, that's a million. Uh, so we believe that uh, companies like Uber and Airbnb have showed that when someone like Thumbs Up can uh, uh, can democratize a huge industry that hasn't been democratized, uh, that, that investors can be very well rewarded. If you had invested in Uber at the stage we're at, you'd be up 16,000 times on your money. And uh, that's what I'm working on helping to deliver here for our shareholders. Thank you so much for that, Robert. I want to thank again, Robert Steele, CEO of Thumbs Up, coming on and sharing with us about what he's building. Thank you so much for your time. And I want to thank every single one of the attendees and uh, especially for your thoughtful questions. Thank you for participating and keeping this interactive. As we wrap up here, a reminder that Thumbs Up is actively raising capital on the Net Capital platform. I added a link to that back into the chat. You can go to netcapital.com slash thumbs up, or you can go to netcapital.com and search Thumbs Up. And if you did miss any of the previous discussions, please do uh, feel free to go to our YouTube channel, Net Capital's YouTube account, where you can recap anything that you missed. And please feel free to share that with anybody that you think uh, might be interested in joining, learning more, and potentially investing. I added a link to that uh, earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and add that one more time here. So you can go ahead and click this link in the chat. That'll take you directly to Net Capital's YouTube account. Usually it takes us a couple hours uh, to upload. And then you can go ahead and review anything that you might have missed. And please do share it generously. Uh, so I want to thank you again to all of our attendees. And Robert, thank you so much for your time and sharing with us about Thumbs Up. Thank you, Eric. Awesome. Take care, everyone.